So, so far I've had no luck beekeeping. This will be my third year. I've made my own top bar hives. That's how I did the first and second year. And both years the hives swarmed uh, and then eventually left or the hive got too small to defend itself against the cold and hive beetles and things like that. This year I'm going to do something uh, called Langstra hives. That's the, the square hive that you, that you usually see. And the way I'm going about it is I'm getting two nukes. And what a nuke is, it's a brood box. This is a brood box. And a nuke, you'll generally get about five frames. This is a frame. And the frame will have a laying queen, some honey, some brood, and uh, some worker bees. And that's basically the start of the colony. So I'll get that that brood box with five frames in it. I'll add the next five per, the next five frames so I have a full full brood box and some room to grow. And then I'll add another brood box. And this brood box will have ten frames that are ready to. Uh, they've got the the uh, comb foundation. This is a wax foundation. And then I'll add a honey super. And so ideally, the bees will have the, the brood in the two brood boxes and then store honey in the upper honey super and then that's what we would harvest from. So that's what we're, we're doing now and I'm kind of getting these ready. I'm going to show you how I put the wax foundation into the frames. This is a frame and this is a knockout. It has a cut along the frame and I'll use a razor blade and cut along that mark there and break this off. And I'll use a chisel to clean this little bit that was left. This is the wax foundation and it has a protective paper that it's shipped with and I'll remove that. There's a slot in the bottom of the frame, and I'll turn the frame in the right side up position, and then drop the wax into that slot, and then turn the frame upside down. You have these little wires here, and I'm going to pinch those wires with the knockout that I removed earlier. The shortest nails I have for my nail gun are 5 eighths of an inch. So it's a little close, it might pop out the top, so I'm going to hold the nail gun on an angle. Now I want to keep the wax foundation as straight as I can, and I'm using two bobby pins in each hole here, and that should help out. So I've got one there. Just regular hair bobby pins, and one over on this side. Now I'll flip the frame over and do the same thing on the other side. So that's pretty straightforward. It does take a little bit of time, and if you don't feel like dealing with it, you can order your frames with a foundation. It could either be a plastic foundation or a wax foundation like I'm using. As far as the honey supers, you can, or the, the frames for the honey supers, you can also use a foundation, but we're going to go foundationless. And the reason for that is when it comes to harvesting, we just are thinking that we don't want to rent a spinner or, or buy a spinner, and we're going to harvest the honey in the crush and strain method. We just crush it all up and then put it through a strainer. And also, my son likes the idea of being able to cut the honeycomb into little bite-sized pieces. So let me uh, get one of those frames and I'll show you how you put one of those together. So it's pretty much the same thing. You can see the frame is a little bit smaller though. Again, I'm going to cut down this knockout here. Clean it up with the chisel again. Now I'll take the knockout and add a little glue, not too much glue. That actually looks like a little bit too much. 
but it doesn't have to be perfect. The bees are going to have wax all over this. And then again, using the nail gun with a 5 8 nail. And then the frame will sit in the honey super like this and the bees will build the honeycomb off of this guide piece. So if everything goes well this year, this is what the hives should look like in the fall. I'll have a bottom brood box, a second brood box, and then a honey super, and maybe even a second honey super. I'm hoping to have two of these going. <laughs> this is the third year I've, I've tried for it, so I'm hoping the third time's a charm. I go to freehold sometime in the next week or two to pick up the bees, and then it starts the whole ball rolling again. really hear the, the box buzzing. I just got back from picking up the bees at From the Garden in Freehold, New Jersey. And now I'm going to put my bee suit on and open up the hive. I'm not opening the hive, I'm just opening the entrance. The entrance was taped shut for the drive. Here they come. Boy, they're coming right out. I'm going to open the hive just to see how many frames are in there. I'm not sure if Drew added any. More than five. There's ten frames in there and they're pretty full. I better I better start adding the top box or they're going to run out of space and maybe swarm. So if you're wondering what's going to happen to the top bar hives, or have I given up on the top bar hives, I haven't given up on them, I'm just taking a break for now. With the, I'm really hoping that the Langstroh hives will become really healthy, and I'll, I'll start to know more as a beekeeper, and maybe we can even split the Langstroh hives into the top bar hives. And I also have a, a swarm catcher set up, and that's designed for the top bar hive. And so if I catch a swarm, we'll put the swarm in, in one of the top bar hives and r really the whole thing is is to just kind of keep moving forward and see what happens. <laughs> 